Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. One pitch. One swing. One moment can determine the outcome of a game. Tonight, the Rays search for that moment, that spark to right the ship. Tonight's Wednesday showdown is brought to you by your Tampa Bay Area Mazda dealers. The Rays continue to search for that moment to turn it around. They've dropped four in a row, 14 of their last 15. And tonight they wrap up this two-game set and the homestand with the St. Louis Cardinals in town. Hi again, everyone, with Todd Callis. I'm Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. We'll be hearing from our whole crew throughout the evening. Brian Anderson has the night off. It has been a difficult run to be sure. The Rays are getting good pitching. They've received good starting pitching the last time through the rotation. Eric Bedard has been the guy who really has led the stability factor to this Rays pitching staff. And he's really been good here at Tropicana Field, especially as of late. You can see his mark of two and one with that ERA right around a half run per game. When he pitched against the Mariners on Friday night, who knew that would be the only time the Rays would have a victory in their last 15 games, but that was the case as he and three relievers combined on a shutout of the Mariners. And Bedard's been really solid and kept his team in games, really, from the start of, this, uh, of his time with the Rays all the way through his last start. You know, the Cardinals say they're struggling offensively, but if you look at the three, four, and five hitters that Bedard's going to have to contend with tonight, it could be a bit of a challenge. Really could be, Dwayne. It's a little surprising that Bedard has faced St. Louis five other times in his career because he's been primarily a national, an American League guy. But the one year in the National League in 2012, he faced the Cardinals four times when he was with the Pirates, and these guys lit him up. Holiday, Craig, Yadier Molina. Look at Yadi with five extra base hits in his six hits in 11 at bats, and Alan Craig with a couple of home runs hitting 417. Well, those three, Yellowwood bringing the lumber in the middle of this St. Louis lineup. They're getting great overall on-base percentage. Their slugging percentage as a team, a point of concern for St. Louis. For the Rays, they're happy to have Ryan Hannigan come off the disabled list, looking for a lift from him behind and at the plate.
field. The Cardinals and the Rays getting set for their getaway game. A quick two-game set. The Cardinals took the first one last night. One nothing, And the good news for Rays fans, as Dwayne Stats alluded to it before he went to commercial break, Ryan Hannigan is back in the lineup. He's batting night tonight and certainly a welcome sight for Rays players and fans. It's his first game back after 14 games on the disabled list. Looking to pick up where he left off offensively. He's already halfway to his career high in RBIs with 22. Ali Solis goes back to AAA Durham, but for Ryan Hannigan, 22 RBIs, as we mentioned, for a team that has really struggled with runners in scoring position. He is best on the team in that category, and he has no apprehension coming back from injury. No. Uh, as long as you feel good, you know, uh, that's what, if you're on the DL and you come off not feeling good, that's, you know, that's your fault. So you got to make sure you're healthy and ready to go. And uh, Yeah, I felt good. You know, even after about seven, eight days, the legs started feeling pretty good, and then I had a another six six days to get it strong so uh i feel pretty good you know it's all good and we want to remind everybody it is web wednesday that's why Dwayne stats and todd callis are boning up on all their details reading clearly sporting goods magazines everything that they need to know is in there sunsportsrays at gmail.com at sunsportsrays hashtag ask raise. we can get your questions on the air. With that, we count down to three minutes till first pitch. Dwayne Stats, Todd Callis with the call when we come back. tonight making his 11th start Rays dropped last night's game to the Cardinals one to nothing these two teams meeting for the first time since 2011 when the Rays won two out of three here's the first pitch of this game presented by pinch a penny and it's a strike call right there around the knees Carpenter hitting 295 and he's in the top 10 over in the National League in on base percentage fifth in the league in walks Bedard throws him another strike 0 2. While the Rays come into this game struggling to find a run, which they have not done in their last 28 innings, the Cardinals are 10th in the league in the National League in runs scored, 
And they're complaining about their offense. One ball, two strikes. The on base percentage has been good for Mike Matheny. The slugging percentage, not so good. They're fifth in on base, 13th in slugging percentage. See Matheny in his third season as the skipper of the Cardinals. We go to two and two on Carpenter. Randall Gritchick will be next. And the count holds right there at two balls, two strikes. Cardinals have won three straight. They're three games over 500 in the National League Central. Running second, they are four games back of Milwaukee. Two postseasons for Matheny, including the World Series appearance last year. And that is strike three. Carpenter tried to check on the fastball up. He is out on strikes. We'll take a look at the rest of the Cardinal lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Richick coming up next, then Matt Holliday, followed by. Alan Craig and Yadier Molina. Yoni Peralta at shortstop. John Jay in left. Mark Ellis hits eighth at second. Peter Borges is the center fielder batting ninth. First pitch from Bedard is outside. One ball, no strikes. Richick who hit a long home run. The other day is first in the big leagues in their Toronto series that traveled over 450 feet. He could be on the bubble in terms of going back to the minor leagues. Oscar Tavares, another promising young outfielder, also considered as a possibility. There's a drive to deep center, and Jennings is there to make the catch. Matt Adams is about ready to come off the DL. Take a look at the Golden Diamond Source defense. You just saw Jennings make the play in center. He's flanked by Matt Joyce and Kevin Kiermeyer. Evan Longoria third. You know Escobar back at his familiar shortstop, which means Ben Zobris is over at second. James Loney at first, and Ryan Hannigan just off the DL behind the dish for Eric Bedard. Good to see Hannigan active again. He did not want to go on that DL, resisted it. Finally realized that that might be the best thing to do to get some rest. Let it mend. Matt Holliday takes a strike. A little hamstring issue. He said about halfway through it started to feel pretty good, and the rest was just a little, little strength in it after that slight injury. One and one. And he did not want to use the hamstring as an excuse for his play, but you know the recent slide he had offensively certainly had an impact with the injury. Yeah, it would seem that uh, the evidence is more than just circumstantial. I mean, it's considerable. He had some big hits for the Rays, was playing great baseball all the way around. One and two now, the count on Matt Holliday. I love that pitch because it illustrates how a pitch in the upper 80s can still get on a hitter when you kind of hide the ball. And that's what Bedard does with that motion he has. His delivery when he twists his back to the hitter really hides that ball well. And Holiday a little bit tardy on an 88 mile an hour fastball. Fouled away, out of play. This is what you're talking about, Todd. He'll show you the full 40 right here. Very deliberate in his motion. Make sure he has the full grip and then the full back turn. Really helps him to keep that ball out of the vision of the hitters until the last possible second. It's a great idea for a pitcher if you can keep everything in sync. And a lot of pitchers have difficulty doing that 
with that kind of drastic turn. Two balls, two strikes. Holiday, the difference in the game last night with his fourth home run of the year came in the sixth inning, the only run of the game. Up the middle, through into center. Two two fastball and Matt Holiday's aboard. Also aboard tonight, Arrestus Destrada, and he's down right next to the dugout in the camera well. And good evening to you, Oh, Thanks, guys. Good to be down here and getting the, the field vision. And one of the things I'm going to be looking at when we come our turn to hit in these woes offensively is some of the things that maybe they've been doing wrong. Obviously, when you're struggling, two things come to mind. Number one, you're behind the count a lot, so let's see if it can hit uh, ahead of the count. And then go on the opposite field, especially with runner in scoring position, trying to hit up the middle just like uh, Holiday did. Opposite field hitting so key when you got running scoring position. Well, here's Alan Craig. First pitch is upstairs. Craig, the cleanup hitter, their first baseman. His numbers on the year 249 with six home runs. He's been an important run producer for the Cardinals in the last couple of years. Drove in 97 runs last year. That catches the outside part of the plate off speed. And the count is one and one. Ground ball to short. Escobar. Up and out with the toss to Zobrist at second. Bottom of the first coming. No score. To lead off for the Rays tonight against the hard throwing young right hander Joe Madden's lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers Jennings, then Kevin Kiermeyer and Evan Longoria, James Loney, Ben Zobrist, and the DH is David DeHaines, who's hitting sixth. Matt Joyce is in left, you know, Escobar, the shortstop, and Ryan Hannigan will do the catching and bad night. They will face the 22 year old right hander Michael Waka who in a short amount of time has become one of the more reliable starters in the National League. Waka will throw that 93 mile an hour fastball. Change ups to the lefties will throw off in and then to righties he'll mix in a cutter as his secondary pitch but also throw a change and a curveball to righties as well. Just developed that cutter this year it was mostly fastball change up his rookie year with an occasional curveball. 
And if he looks a little familiar, perhaps you were with us last night. He follows Adam Wainwright around and emulates him in almost everything he does. First pitch is a strike to Jennings. Two tall right handers. Walk is 6'6, six, six, Wainwright 6'7. Six, and there are some who think that even facially they look alike. And Walker has grown a little facial hair just uh, to mimic Wainwright. In fact, during the spring, Mike Matheny actually mistook one of them for the other one. How about that? Your manager can't tell them apart. And he's, this guy's a bright guy, Matheny. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. And number one is a catcher, and he's had instant success as a manager. And you get two of your top starting pitchers mixed up. Similar builds, similar styles on the mound. Jennings ground ball to short. That's Peralta throwing a strike to Craig. One away. Time for the Golden Diamond Source defense for the Cardinals in the outfield. John Jay, Peter Borges in center field, Randall Grichik in right, Matt Carpenter, Johnny Peralta, Mark Ellis getting the start at second base, Alan Craig over at first, Yadier Molina, who has thrown out 44% of the runners this year, again behind the plate, and Michael Waka on the mound. There's Kevin Kiermeyer. And down the bunt takes the pitch in there for a strike. How about Kiermeyer? The Ray struggling offensively since May the 18th. He's led this team in extra base hits, and he spent a week of that time in the minor leagues. He has nine extra base hits in that stretch. He's been doing it all. He's been making great plays on defense. Moves him back. Two and one. He's hung in there in some tough at bats against a couple of lefties. Three balls and a strike. And with the Rays facing right handers on a regular basis now, he's getting a lot of at bats. They will face all right handers in their series in Houston beginning Friday. And he draws the walk. The Rays have the first base runner. One on, one out for Evan Longoria. Well, the Rays coming into this game and not scored in 28 innings. In fact, the last runs came on Evan Longoria's two run home run in the eighth inning Saturday. This would be a good time to snap that. Here's Longoria in the first with a man on and one out tonight. Facing a tough right hander. Line drive, and it's caught by Carpenter. Boy, the Rays hit at least four line drives last night with runners in scoring position, and Longoria scalded this one. Evan was out for early BP today. First at bat, hits it as hard as he possibly can and hits it right at the third baseman. At some point, you just wonder in that dugout, when is the luck going to finally turn in your favor? Well, as frustrating as it can be with last night and then that one, these are great signs because all you can do is hit the ball hard, and sooner or later, if you do that often enough, things will fall in for you. But boy, it's frustrating given where the Rays have been in the last few weeks. Kevin Kiermeyer, they check him at first base. Walk is not a guy that's very easy to run on. Quick to the plate and with Yadier, Yadier Molina behind the dish. That's a deadly combination. Yeah, there have only been a couple of attempted steals and uh, too bad for them. No steals at all with this combination of Walker and Molina. No steals for the opposition. 0 for 2. One and all the count to James Loney. Ground ball first, backhanded by Craig, who steps on the bag, retiring the Rays. They leave one. We go to the second scoreless.
town. Eric Bedard making the start. And he faces Yadier Molina. His career numbers against Bedard imposing, to say the least. Six of 11, two homers, and three doubles. A curveball in there for a strike. Molina 290 overall for the year. Is it much better against right handed pitching than left handed pitching? Despite those numbers that he has in his career against Bedard. 265 against lefties this year and overall 290. See the breakout there, 297. Against right handed pitchers. That evens the count. Hunter Wendelstadt calls the balls and strikes tonight. The next, and then Jay. And that is strike three call. Nice pitch there. Started it wide, and it caught the outside part of the plate. Bedard, a perfect spot. Outside corner at the knees. You can see his release right here. As he picks up his second strikeout in as many innings. I'm interested to see how he fares tonight. He struggled with this team when he was with the Pirates in 2012, a couple years ago. But he's been pitching better this year than he did with the Pirates in 2012. Pitch up a bit and in. Peralta moving away. One and one. He's had an interesting mix to his pitches. You know, basically, if you look at the four seamer and two seamer and a curveball and a changeup, they're pretty evenly spread. Cut the ball sometimes. In the left, and Joyce has the measure of that one. So two up, two down here in the second inning. Arrestus, what do you see from Eric Bedard? Well, I tell you, after seeing him for many years with you know success, especially with Baltimore, from the full windup, it is very deceiving. And I'm gonna tell you one other reason why it's not why it is because hitting is about timing. And when you notice that he starts his windup and he kind of pauses, then does the door, a hitter kind of keys on. Even though you know he does that, it sets you kind of. In a bad motion because you almost want to start your swing. You'll see him go right about here. Then he does the swing. The whole thing messes up your timing. And of course, as TK alluded to, you also have to struggle boxing him up and finding that ball. But hitting is about timing. So when he starts right here, I'm expecting him to start kicking his legs. Then he swings. It's a difficult timing mechanism for a hitter. Yeah, hitting is like dancing, isn't it? Correct. You, 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 he you know, she takes a step, you're supposed to go somewhere. Well, this guy starting it, then kind of stopping it, then swinging it, it, it's a whole kind of a mess up that you have to really focus. Yeah, scouts ought to take prospective young hitters dancing to figure out if they can hit. Kiermeyer will make the pickup in right center field on Jay's base hit. A two out single for John Jay. Dwayne, that looks like a routine play, and it's not. That's a ball that could get towards the wall with some right fielders, and Kiermeyer just made it look so easy. There's the swing by Jay on Phantom Cam, but it was Kiermeyer's ability to make a quick break and cut this ball off and make it look like a simple play when it wasn't. And he just gets covered so much ground in a little amount of time. Yeah, he is. Uh 
full speed from the first step and had a nice little route to that one to cut it off. And you're absolutely right. That was not a routine play. To add to that, to the point is that I'm watching King on John Jay. The moment it hits the ball, he put his head down hard, just like Kiermaier thinking, well, I got myself a double. Then he looks up, and there's Kiermaier by the ball. So you kind of you gauge it by what the hitter responds. And he's thinking, I'm off to the races. And no, you're not, because that guy just cut it off. You guys are so right. I mean, this kid, it's not crazy and over abundance of, of, of you know, aggression. It's calculated and smart and just hustling. Yeah, you're right about that. There's more than just hustle there. It's smarts and concentration. There's Jay out of the box right now. He's thinking, okay, I got my head down. I'm going, wait a second. Are you kidding me? Where did you come from? So you put Kiermar and Jennings out there and right and center. You're closing a lot of gaps. One and one to count to Mark Ellis. Two and one. Ellis, a veteran infielder. Boy, he's had some big hits against the Rays from his time in the American League. He's been a tough out in tough situations. And guys, we don't like those middle infielders that are hitting at about 170 or so. Somehow, somehow they kind of hurt us a lot. <laughs> those guys are dangerous for us. Yeah, there's not a lot of margin for error when anybody's hurting the Rays these days. <laughs> I, I was just being facetious. We I'll just tell you. We've had some guys that have just beat us on 0-2 strikes. Uh, yep. and, and you go, you scratch your head. That's the streak we're on. It's, you can't really put a, you can't understand it. This one is by him three and one. So the count goes full on the fastball from Bedard. Cardinals left a base runner in the first. They have Jay at first with two outs in the second inning. Maybe five year old lefty Eric Bedard coming off his six inning outing Friday against Seattle when he gave up no runs and four hits. Goes and the pitch pop foul. That's going to carry out a play, and we'll do all that again on a full count and two outs. Jay returns to first, and he'll be off on this next pitch as well. That's the other thing Ellis can do. He can prolong it at bat. But Dart has had success against Ellis in his career. Two for his last 17 against Eric, and four for 21 overall. Eric doesn't want to lose this guy. He's already up to 35 pitches in the second inning without. Too much happening on the base pass for the Cardinals. Three two and a roller that's going to go through the right side. Jay's on his way to third. How about that hit? That's the way the Rays have been living recently. They got that hot smash off the bat of Longoria, but right at Carpenter. And Ellis, he couldn't have taken his hand and just roll the ball softly in a better direction than this hit. That was just a little curveball. He had a little time to adjust as that pitch was coming in. Didn't get much of it. And Loney was playing off first. He was not holding the runner, but still not able to get to that hole between first and second. The softest possible ground base hit. Peter Borges. Ninth placed hitter in Mike Matheny's lineup. A 220 average to start the evening. Takes that pitch short and on the bat. Gorgeous. Known for his defensive skill. Coming up with the Angels. He can cover all kinds of ground in the outfield. The 0 1. 
One ball, one strike. In every game, you want to get off to a decent start, be the first team to score. But I think especially now with the way the Rays offense has been, you don't want to see the Cardinals get this first run. It's just so much pressure on this team trying to figure out a way to snap this scoreless streak. You don't want to start coming from behind in the second inning. One one check swing and the pitch is fouled trying to hold up. It's a ball and two strikes. You know, to, to your point, TK, which is a very good point. You know, as a hitter, it's a day-to-day -day grind, and, and you try to block out a lot of things. But when you get into this type of lengthy negativeness, it does seep in. And uh, these are the little things that seep in. They score first, your mind starts racing. When normally in a normal season, you know, those little things don't bother you. You just go on to your bats. Upstairs. It's two and two. A pair of two out singles putting men at first and third. Down to first, knocked down by Loney. He picks it up and steps on the bag, and the Cardinals leave too. We go to the bottom of the second, no score. Presented by Toyota. Let's go places. AT&T mobilizing your world. Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. And by your Tampa Bay area Mazda dealers. It takes conviction, creativity, and courage to build cars worth driving. This is the Mazda way. First pitch to Ben Zobris. Here in the bottom of the second inning, Ben takes that one for a strike. Ben hitting 241 overall for the year with five home runs. One and one. Michael Waka, young right hander out of Texas AM. That's a strike. One ball, two strikes. Didn't take him long to get to the big leagues in 2011. He was pitching in the College World Series. He was a first round pick the next year. A little chopper. Ellis makes the pick up, and Zobris is the first out in the second inning. 
to the minor leagues last year and was called up at the end of May. Cardinals called him up on May the 30th last year. Boy, he was a major part of their success story. Cardinals did not think they were going to have a shot at him in the draft. They thought at 19, kid with that arm, pitching well for Texas A&M was going to go well before their selection. They were very happily surprised. David DeJesus taking a pitch too low. Two and two or two and all the count. Side, but it's pulled foul, bouncing into the stands. Two and one. We've seen some 88, 89s, 90s with the fastball tonight. Normally he's a little bit higher than that. It may take him an inning or two to work into it, but normally he's around 93 with that four seam fastball. Yeah, there were times last year when it would vary from 90 to the high 90s, 97 or so. But you're right, most of the time he's at. 92 approaching 93. Yeah, guys, I didn't want to like jump out here and say, hey, where is this? Because uh, I'm down on, I mean, I'm feet from, from the batter's box and I'm not saying he's throwing slow, but it's not, you know, as explosive as I maybe thought it would be. You know, the word on him is that there's a lot of late life in that fastball as well. There's one. There you go. 94 on our gun, 95 on the. Gun here at the trough. After that ball that DeJesus pulled foul, which was 90, he's been 93, 94 on the last two. If you can fluctuate and control from like 89 to 95, that's outstanding. Full count. Braves drew a walk in the first. Kiermeyer walked against Waka. And there's another one. Threw him a 3 2 breaking ball. So DeJesus heads to first. In tonight's game, we're participating in the home run challenge. Every home run in this game raises $5,600. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. One on one out for Matt Joyce. Slow picked out of the ground by Molina. That starts the night at 263. Been good at home. He was 0 for 3 last night. It's a little number down to Carpenter. And he is out at first with De Jesus advancing into second. Matt was really early on that fastball. Hit it just cued it off the end of the bat there. He and Madden were again, Joe Madden working on little small ball work pregame today about getting that front foot down and getting the bat started quickly that time he had it started so early that even on a fastball he just barely cued it off the end of the bat man in scoring position for the Rays and here is Janelle Escobar Ball stays high. He's missed with that curveball the last couple times he's tried to throw that. Not only does he look like Adam Wainwright, he said, he's actually pitching like Adam did yesterday when Wainwright self admittedly did not like his curveball. Top 
opposite way. Richie can right is there to catch it, and the Rays leave a man at second. We're through two, scoreless. Raising the cards, heading to the top of the third scoreless. And Todd and Dwayne have their first question of the night. A lot of people on email, guys, asking with Ryan Hannigan's return to the lineup, what attributes does he bring that are going to help these Rays get out of their offensive funk, guys? Well, that's uh, number one, it was a big addition over the uh, winter to have him here, and they are multifaceted, the qualities he brings to this team. And Carpenter takes the pitch for a ball 1 0. And I think it uh, it begins his value begins behind the plate and how involved he is. With every pitch out there he does a great job. Of blocking pitches. But he is involved. Pitch to pitch. With this staff. And I think is a perfect guy to help develop. A couple of these young pitchers in particular. Agreed. I think now you've got two veteran catchers that you can count on. Ali Solis was still cutting his teeth at the major league level, but we saw Jose Molina, and I thought yesterday was the best he had worked with Jake Odorizzi, and probably Odorizzi's best major league start. Now you've got Hannigan and Molina, two veterans that really can be like a captain on the field out there for you. The other thing about Hannigan is his offense, and it did. Slump when he uh, got a little banged up and finally wound up wound up on the disabled list. But when you look at uh, him healthy, you know he had 15 two out RBIs, leads the club in that department, hitting down in the order, and and that's an element that he can contribute to the offense. When he's healthy, he's a good offensive player. Well, consider he has 22 runs batted in and the team leads 30 right now. And this is a guy that just was on the DL for 15 days. Carpenter draws the walk on a pitch that was close. Carpenter among the National League leaders in walks, and he takes one here. You see, they were staying away from Carpenter that whole bat. He's a guy that takes a lot of pitches, over four pitches per plate appearance, and he was very patient in that situation. So the leadoff man aboard. Cardinals have had runners in every inning. Richick, the right fielder at the plate. It's down and in. 
Bedard in each of the first two innings had retired the first two hitters before giving up any base runners. Now the leadoff walk finds him out of the stretch right away. Lifted into left, back goes Joyce to his left to make the catch. Got a breaking ball. Hit into left for the first out. Time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SunSports fan photo for a chance to have it shown in our broadcast later in the game. Brought to you by AT&T. Matt Holiday. He singled. Two out base hit in the first inning. Fastball fouled straight back for a strike. You mentioned the Cardinals and their on base percentage being where they want primarily, but struggling a little bit in the slugging percentage department. And Holiday, even with the home run in last night's game, 380 slugging this year. Career, he's 525 slugging percentage. So they're expecting more out of him. They're going to get Matt Adams back probably this weekend, as you mentioned. Uh, they expect their offense is going to move forward and pick up some steam as June continues. Yeah, in a microcosm with what the Cardinals are concerned about, I guess you'd look at Holiday because his slugging percentage and his on base percentage are identical. So he's fine. He's 380 in the on base, 380 in the slugging percentage department. And right there's the crux of the issue for the Cardinal offense. Just his fourth home run when he hit one off of Jake Odorizzi last night. The other way in the right, Kiermeyer there to make the catch. Two gone. And you know, guys, it's interesting, but fitting. That their key hitters in both these lineups are the number three guys, and both number three guys aren't really slugging the way you expect. Because I mean, you flip flop it on on our side with Evan and his uh, what 26 RBI, seven home runs in the 260s. You know, very similar pedestrian numbers like like a Holiday, and much more is expected from those guys. And it kind of is as they go, so does the offense goes. Alan Craig. Which is high. And you, and you know the point that the all was making there is absolutely right. If you break down when the Rays win and when they lose and you look at the, the numbers associated with that there's a direct parallel to uh, Evans numbers and the club's numbers. And that's true of central figures in every lineup. It's not just Evan. It's Holiday with the Cardinals. It's it's like that with teams. That ball is fair, just fair by Longoria. Kicks off the sidewall. Carpenter is going to be held at third. The throw comes all the way through to the plate. Carpenter stopped at third, and Craig has himself a double. And again, the Cardinals with a two-out threat. I'm not sure if that ball fooled Longoria. Normally he would dive is. after it. But look at this ball. He's looking at it thinking this might go foul. And he's like, you got to be kidding me. How did that ball stay fair? That's and, exactly. And then Carpenter gets a late hold sign right here by Jose Akendo. You'll see him spinning and then all of a sudden getting the late breaks. As Matt Joyce missed the cutoff, man. But he did throw it back in quickly. Yeah, and the situation on that ball hit by Craig. By Longoria is just another one of those peculiar things that the Rays seem to have happened to them on a nightly basis. I mean, who is better at knowing his space around the bag than Evan Longoria? And somehow that ball fooled him. Well, here's Molina. Pitch outside. We got to hear Molina, and we saw the numbers that Molina has put up in his career against Bedard. The tough hitter in his own right and has very good numbers against the Rays lefty throughout his career. 
key situation again. It's a strike makes it one and one. Cardinals left minute first and third in the second left a man on in the first. Now second and third here in the third inning. And a cut and a miss. A change up. Had him off stride out in front. The TK's point earlier. We're in the top of the third. I'm at the edge of my seat already down here hoping that we can get out of this inning without them scoring first after another kooky play as, as Dwayne you were saying alluding to you know these things these plays tend to hurt us so much. I'm hoping it doesn't hurt. Us. Yep absolutely. Every situation becomes crucial as the Rays try to shake out of the doldrums. It's up. Two balls, two strikes. This is a meeting that was called by Eric Bedard. They try to go up and in on Yadier at one and two, missed. And now he wants to throw the pitch that he has conviction in at two and two with this situation, second and third, two outs. Yeah, you want to be sure. You don't want any doubts. Conviction is the key. You got to throw the pitch. Whatever pitch you decide, you got to believe in it. Peralta on deck. So Molina stepping back now. Bedard will step back. It makes you wonder if they are on the same page. I think they are. I think Hannigan was just flashing signs that didn't really mean anything. Bizarre didn't even look at the signs. And a foul ball back. He had him reaching. So we'll do it again with a 2 2 count. Throw that little cutter a little more tonight than I, I can remember in the past. Trying to. Break something off on the outside corner and Molina stayed alive. Two pitch again. Up and in. The count is full. So 60 pitches for Bedard. He tries to get through the third inning. And a base hit the other way. Carpenter scores. Craig to the plate. He is safe. Now a throw back to first and safe there. Craig got around the tag. The throw up the line away from the plate a bit. And Molina drives in the first two runs of this game to make it two to nothing. Molina stayed in this count down one and two worked it all the way back to a full count. This is a play that Kiermaier thought he'd be able to throw the runner out. The throw was just a little bit up the line and Hannigan unable to get that tag back in time to get the runner Craig. There you see the throw up the line. And again this is part of the issue too with the new rules with giving a runner a lane your catcher cannot block the path of the runner before he has the ball so Hannigan is a little further up and Craig able to get around the tag as that throw was on the third base side. How close did he come to tagging him he missed him but he came as close as you can come without actually tagging a guy. Molina makes it two to nothing and here's Peralta. It's a foul ball. Here's another look at how close 
Hannigan's mid is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you get. I, I mean, <laughs> inch at the most. Nice elusive slide by great. Greg. Great slide. All right, that's a big guy too doing that. One strike to count on Peralta. I tell you the other thing about that. That was a great example of hitting by Molina. You know, he had gone away. Molina stands a little bit open anyway. Then he came back in, up and in, tried to go away again, and Molina with that hole on the right side, just a pure professional hitter, found that hole and drove in both runs. Now Peralta waves and misses. Everybody talks about Yadier's defense, but he's been over 300 the last three years. Yep. And each year has gotten better. And doesn't try to do too much with his 300. He's not a 330 homer guy. He knows that. So he's a 310, 12 homer guy. But he's been a 70, 80, you know, uh, timely runner in score position. Remember when I started that I'm down here at the field level? One of the couple things I'm looking at is hitting ahead in the count and then with runner in score position. Hitting to the opposite field, you get most success trying to stay towards that lane, and that's what Molina did. Ball fouled, so it's still one and two on Johnny Peralta. Though, unfortunately, Bedard, if I remember, we'll take a look at that later on, but I think Hanningen was trying to double up on that 2 2 up and in. Then had Yadier thinking, well, they're going to change me away. And he wanted pumped it in, and that ball floated out over the plate. Yep. And he took it the other way. And that is strike three on the appeal. Down the lane. Two run score for the Cardinals. It's 2 0 St. Louis. For Bay Area Mazda dealers. Bottom of the third coming up. The Rays are down two to nothing. Ryan Hannigan will open the inning for the Rays. Then the top of the order, Desmond Jennings, followed by Kevin Kiermeyer. Rays facing this young right-hander. He's out there with a veteran presence for the Cardinals. You're right about that. His mound presence is well beyond his 22 years of age. Goes to work and misses with a fastball outside, 1 0. And last year he got better as the stakes were higher. Lifted toward left center, but gorgeous to his right a bit, makes the catch. And again, is the first out. He'll swing back around to the top of the order. 
the game tonight. All season long, Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. So the first time through the lineup, the Rays draw a couple of walks. That's it. And here is Desmond Jennings taking a breaking pitch. It's too low. One ball, no strikes. Comes back with it and misses again. Two and zero. Oh. Three balls, no strikes. It's Kiermaier on deck. Three and one. That's the other thing about Waka. He's pretty good when it comes to uh, putting a lid on bases on balls. Driven into right. Kritik is there to make the catch, and there's a case where he fell behind Jennings 3 0 and comes back to get him for the second out. Yeah, he's out there under control. We mentioned Oda Rizzi's pace last night, which we thought was really good. This guy gets the sign, throws it, gets the ball back, gets the sign, throws it. He doesn't take any time between pitches. Even when he's behind in the count 3 0, he's able to pour a fastball in. And then Jennings hit that 3 1 pitch hard, but able to get him out. It's Kiermaier. Pitch is in there for a strike. He opens him with the curveball and finds the strike zone with it. Chop to second. It's Ellis making the play, and it's a quick inning. One, two, three, go the Rays. We head into the fourth. 2 0 St. Louis. Fourth inning at the Trop. If you love music, you're going to love the OJs playing the summer concert series after the Rays take on the Astros Saturday, June 21st. The Rays will turn back the clock to the 70s, and you can get down and enjoy the OJs as they play hits like I Love Music and Love Train. Get your tickets now at RaysBaseball.com or call 888-FAN-RAYS. First pitch strike into John Jay. Fourth inning underway. Eric Bedard touched for two runs in the third. Rays trail 2 0. Cardinals have five hits. And you can make that six. Jay is two for two. Lead off single. But John Jay has reverse splits indeed. He came in hitting 391 
off left handed pitching and he's two for two tonight against Bedard. Took a, took a little curveball and found that hole between first and second. There you see his split numbers. Over 400 now against lefties. Another base runner for the Cardinals. They let off the third with a walk. They've opened the fourth with a single. There's Mark Ellis. Going to throw a little love to my boy John Jay there, who's uh, from literally from the neighborhood that I work, uh, uh, grew up in. Knew his family very well. In fact, his parents are here up from Miami. Went to my high school. And I, I, one thing I'll say about the kid, he's fought hard because he's. He's not really one thing that stands out. He's just a smart baseball player that does everything well. Uh, right, well, this year standing out is hitting 400 against lefties. He usually doesn't do that. But I've been a fan of this kid since he uh, signed with the Cardinals out of University of Miami. And and I'll tell you also as a person, uh, he's just a wonderful human being. And, I, and I'm so happy for him because uh, the Cardinals really have stuck with him. And they like him. And they see what. What he brings to the table. He's kind of like a Zobris type of guy, can do everything well. Yeah, he can play all over the outfield. And uh, hit 276 last year for the Cardinals. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Talking to him uh, before the game, and, uh, and I said, Oh man, I forgot to ask you, you okay now? You, you know, he had to move from say, his beloved center field. He can play all three without a problem. He looked at me and goes, Oh, I don't care, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, just, I'm ready to play. Put him wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Base hit driven into left by Ellis. Jay turns second and holds there. Back to back singles. And again, the Cardinals put the pressure on with nobody out. So seven hits given up by Bedard. Kirby Yates just uh, walked down and around the corner and has a seat in the bullpen. The rookie right hander just letting people know he's out there and available if you need him. Well, he's responsible for bringing all the snacks down to the bullpen, so he better be there first. <laughs> Here's Peter Borges. Just puts down the bunt. Back to second out there. They get the middleman. Jay goes to third. So Ellis is cut down on the sacrifice attempt. Nice play by Longo right here. He gets on this ball in a hurry and makes the quick decision to go to second to get the man in the middle, Mark Ellis. Here you see Longoria right away. He has to make that decision right away to get that fourth and second. And now gives the Rays the potential to get out of this inning with a double play. Yeah, that's uh, the import of that play by Evan Longoria right there. To keep a double play possibility. At least within the realm. So here is Matt Carpenter. Ground ball that's going to slip through. Jay scores. Borges heads to third. He's safe. RBI single for Carpenter. It's three to nothing, St. Louis. I mean to tell you, some of these ground balls are perfectly placed. That was a ground ball that could have been a double play if it's five feet to the left. Instead, it's perfectly in between James Loney. And Ben Zobris and turns into an RBI single. Every single time the Rays get that ground ball, it seems to be finding a hole into the outfield. So the Cardinals again have men at first and third with a run home now. Boxberger has arrived down there in the bullpen and he's going to start to loosen. Three runs, eight hits so far. Randall Gritchick takes a big cut. 
Got some pop in that bat. Strike one. One and one. You mentioned the decision the Cardinals have coming up with Matt Adams returning from the DL over the weekend. Rich is a guy who has shown potential. You mentioned the long home run at Rogers Center on Saturday, but against lefties this year, that's where he's going to see most of his bats. Just three for 26, mm -hmm. including the 0 for 2 here tonight. So you're absolutely on point there. Tonight, for example, against the lefty, their bench is all lefties with the exception of the backup catcher. But if they do keep Grichik, they would like to see those numbers against lefties be a little better than they have. Keeps the count at one and two. You mentioned weird stuff happening to this Rays team, and when you're struggling like they are now, the ball that fooled Longoria, I don't think I've ever seen him fooled by a ball down the line that bounced off the bat of Alan Craig near the chalk line. Every ground ball that can find a hole has found a hole. A line drive by Longoria finds a fielder. Tight right there as Richick started to step into the pitch. Fastball close and it's two and two. Stairs. Well, the count is full. Cardinals have Borges at third base. Carpenter is aboard at first. And the count full on the hitter. Carpenter back in. Loney holding him. Loney and Carpenter know each other from their time. In the Houston area, Missouri City, they played high school baseball together. Number one ranked team in the country. Cut the miss. There's a big strikeout for Bedard. Two outs in the inning. Bedard's fourth strikeout. Right at the top of the zone, Gritcher couldn't catch up to the fastball. Eric would love to keep the damage where it is right now, which is three runs. He has been so good over his last eight starts, not allowing big numbers. He wants to make sure his team stays just three back. He faces Matt Holiday. Hit it toward right center. Kiermaier closes and makes the catch. That retires the side and limits the damage to the one run. Jay let off with the base hit has scored the run and it's 3 nothing St. Louis.
Thank you. The Rays have sold out Papa John's bullpen box for the 2014 season. Limited dates remain for other group party areas at Tropicana Field, such as the left field terrace, 162 landing, and the back porch. For information, contact group sales at 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com. Well, the Rays have fallen behind three to nothing as they come into bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Evan Longoria leads off against Michael Walker, and the pitch is outside. One ball, no strikes. Well, at some point, something has to give, and you would certainly hope that it could start right here. Down to third. Carpenter throws a strike across the diamond. So that is out number one. The Rays have not scored in 31 consecutive innings, and that goes right back to Longoria's home run in the eighth inning Saturday. Corresponding with the last time the Rays had a hit with runners in scoring position. Here's James Loney. Been shut out for three consecutive games. Looking for their first run tonight as they hit against Waka in the fourth. And as O mentioned earlier, there's a heaviness that sets in. And when you're going well, it seems like you're never going to lose a game. And you're scoring runs and getting good pitching. When things are going the other way, hey, there's a base hit past the bag up the left field line on a check swing. Those are the kinds of things the Rays need to have happen. Put a couple of those together and somebody pop one and you start to believe again. How about that for the Rays first hit? Had no intention of swinging at this baseball, did James Loney. Checked his swing. Oh, hit it by accident. And what do you know? It stays just inside the third base bag. Maybe, Dwayne, maybe that is a sign of things turning around. Well, here's Ben Zobris tapping it foul. Strike one. Ben started the night at 241 on the year, 240 right now. Peralta. Uh, a little humpback liner. Soft looping liner and Zobris is aboard. So a couple of back to back hits. Not the hardest balls that will ever be hit, but they're base hits. That's a little squib off the end of the bat that just to lose the shortstop Johnny Peralta. So an excuse me swing. A little bloop that lands about 10 feet beyond the infield. They look like two line drives tomorrow morning. And hopefully this will be the start of something good here for the Rays in the fourth. Two men on for David DeJesus, the designated hitter. Marco gave up a walk to DeJesus in the second inning. It's popped up, shallow left. Jay comes in as time to get there to make the catch on this one. So two outs. That seems to be the problem in this stretch. We've had a lot of quote unquote start of something good innings. And uh, had one yesterday against Wainwright. Then seems like it's just what really needs to get him over the hump is. Somebody just dropping a big fly with two guys on base or or a big quality hit with a base loaded and two outs. You know that really gets your boil your you know your blood boiling again as a hitter. You go, okay we can do this and you, you keep it going. Well, Matt Joyce takes a pitch down. One ball no strikes. Two and zero. Oh. You get into a stretch like this, it could be a helpless feeling until somebody does pop one and you get a couple of 
Nice innings back to back. Hot shot foul out of play. Well, Matt had a couple of opportunities in last night's game, unable to come through. I, again, he did the early work with Joe, and they wanted to get things started quicker, but he is so quick tonight. He swung the first time, and Cued went off the end of his bat, and that time he had a 2-0 pitch, and he just hammered it, but hooked it way foul. He was way ahead of that pitch. The foul ball runs the count to 2-2. It's Escobar. Hoping to get a chance to swing the bat here in the fourth inning. Full count. So this will start the runners. Pretty good take, too. Even though that ball was in the dirt, it was the changeup that presents itself as a low strike, and Matt able to recognize it and not chase. Runners go on a line drive, base hit into center. Loney, big wave to the plate, he's going to score. Now Zobris will score, and the Rays get on the board. Line drive by Joyce, all bobbled out there by Borges. Loney scored without a problem, and Zobris crossing the plate, and the Rays break this streak. After 31 innings, the Rays have... Two runs on the board. Good for Matt Joyce to be the one to break through, too, as he hit a bullet. The way things are going, you almost anticipated Peralta to make it a phenomenal play. But then the normally sure-handed Peter Borges boots the ball in center and then kind of throws it short hop to the cutoff man. Made two mistakes in one there, and that allowed Ben Zobers to come all the way around from first to score as he was on the move. Here's Escobar. It's a three to two ball game. First pitch is high. So you get the little check swing grounder by James Loney, the little bloop by Ben Zobris. Then Joyce finally gets the count to three two, where you get the runners on the move, and he hits one. The hardest ball anybody hit in that inning, and he hits a bullet to center, but then Borg just really didn't make a good play in center and allowed that second run to score. Yeah, and that first pitch into Escobar had some anger behind it. It was way high, and Molina winds up going out there to settle Walker down a little bit. They had an angry pitcher out there for a moment. He's just trying to redirect him. Yeah, good call on that, Dwayne. You can see Molina, the veteran, all-star, helmet off, slow walk to the mound. Like, oh, wait a second, big horse. But you're right. You know, TK, I'm down here field level. That ball is hit by Matt. And I don't know how. I'm thinking Peralta's going to sky like back in the day Jordan and somehow get to that <laughs> ball. I'm going. I'm looking at it. He goes, there's no way he can get there. There's no way. He's going to get that. No, okay, thank goodness. It's normalness. is back in store. Upstairs. Two balls, no strikes. Waka in with a curveball that was up. He's tried to get that pitch into play and has missed more times than he would like with it. And before you know it, he's thrown as many almost as many balls as he has strikes. And that's up. So it's a 3-0 count right now. Only one pitch difference between strikes and non strikes. See, 27 strikes of the 53 pitches he's made. Three and one. So the Rays close the gap to one. And a big cut right there by Escobar. Fouled it back. 3 1 fastball. Fouled it off the mask of the home plate umpire Hunter Wendelstead. See again here. This is a little bit up in the zone, and that is a direct shot. Took the little protector piece down off the bottom of the mask. Yeah, and those are the shots that uh, concern 
uh, the medical people about potential concussions. We've had catchers suffer concussions with direct hits to the mask. And that took uh, part of the mask apart right there. Joyce at first, two outs, two runs home. And ball four is low. So the inning will continue. That walk will get Hannigan to the plate. And the Cardinals want to talk it over on the mound. I will say this, fellas. Luckily, it helped us stay in the game yesterday, even though we didn't have an offense. And today, we're in the midst of being in this game. Uh, we are not getting the, the the two big W's that we were expecting to get in Wainwright and Walker because those guys are lights out and, and Wainwright was pretty hittable yesterday. After that conference on the mound, it's going to be Hannigan. Uh -huh. The catcher, Ryan Hannigan. On the ball, Joyce hit the center field, scoring Loney. And on which Zobra scored, they're going to give Joyce one run batted in and charge Borges with an error for mishandling it out there. And the Rays took advantage of that with Zobra scoring. There's a first pitch strike to Hannigan. Strike. So the Rays snapped an 0 for 21 streak with runners in scoring position and score for the first time. They've gone 31 consecutive innings without a Run. They have two home in the fourth. Let's take on the low fastball. Two and one. Now it's a three ball, one strike count. Pitch is starting to build up here to the last three hitters. Not too many pitches for the first four, but Joyce went 3 2 single. Escobar 3 2 walk. 3 1 to Hannigan. And he walks. Waka had only walked three total in his previous three starts and one in his last two. He just has not had good command tonight. Oh, mentioned his strike to ball ratio, which is now higher for the balls than the strikes. He has just not been able to command his fastball and missed with some curveballs and gotten himself in trouble here after a couple of blue pits with one out in this inning. Here's Desmond Jennings with the bases loaded. And there's a first pitch curveball. He throws it for a strike. He's not afraid to throw that pitch. He threw a 3 2 curveball to DeHazers when he walked him back in the second. And after the back to back walks to Escobar and Hannigan, starts Jennings with a first pitch curveball for a strike. And Jennings fouls the fastball. So he's quickly down 0 2. It's Matt Joyce at third, Yonel Escobar at second, Ryan Hannigan. Runner for the Rays at first base. It's down. One and two. That's the same pitch that Matt Joyce took when the count was two and two. To move the count full, that change up that Waka tries to get you to chase, and then Matt was able with the runners moving to drill that single to center field. This will be the 28th pitch 
of the inning coming. And it's lined into left. There's a base hit. Joyce will score to tie the game. Here comes Escobar. He scores. And the Rays take the lead. Desmond Jennings comes through. And the Rays now lead 4-3. Well, sometimes it just takes a break or two to get things turned around. The Rays caught a couple breaks with the singles by James Loney and Ben Zobris, and now they take advantage after a couple of walks. Desmond down in the count, nothing in two, doesn't chase the changeup, and then rips that pitch in the left field to score two. Michael Walk is frustrated, and the Rays all of a sudden, after that scoreless streak, have broken out with the lead. So here's Kevin Kiermaier. He fouls it back. And a good cut at that first pitch fastball, strike one. Kiermaier becomes the ninth man to hit for the Rays here in the fourth inning. Pitch stays inside. One and one. And as Walker pitched into a little tough luck in the early part of this one, Joyce got him for that base hit. And then his command deserted him a little bit. Maybe some of that poise as well. And then Jennings with a big base hit for the Rays to give the Rays the lead. You can see over 30 pitches. Yeah, he's not. He is heated right now. He get, had a game in Kansas City where he had the lead in his last start. The Royals ended up scoring a three spot on him in the sixth inning and won that game three to two. Outside, two balls, two strikes. But Dwayne D uh, TK, this guy has not given up more than three runs in all his starts, correct? Last 14. Or last 14, excuse me. And we hadn't scored in 28 innings. It's fitting. And we'd be the team to score for a four spot on him. Foul out of play. I will say two out. That was great to see two out hitting. You know, we just, I mean, we want to see one out, zero out hitting because we hadn't scored any runs. But that was a clutch at bat by Desmond Jennings to battle and battle. And even the balls that he fouled off, he was on. Uh, just, just, you know, you just got to keep at it in this game and wait for it to turn around. Kiermaier trying to add to what has been a big inning for the Rays, a four run fourth, and he stays alive without front on the changeup and just got a, enough of it to foul it. That's been the key to this inning. Three different changeups 2 2 to Matt Joyce, 0 2 to Desmond Jennings, that one to Kevin Kiermaier. The Rays didn't chase the first two. Kiermaier stayed alive on that one. Joyce and Jennings ended up with RBI base hits. 2-2. Ground ball deep first. Craig has it. He races Kiermeyer into the bag. So the Rays sent nine men to the plate to put up four. Base hit by Matt Joyce. Got the run started to give the Rays runs for the first time after 31 scoreless innings.
game. The Rays have taken the lead on the board with a four-run fourth inning. Eric Bedard's going to be lifted. Brad Boxberger will enter this game. And as we go to the fifth, here's Todd. Right, thank you. Boxberger takes over for Eric Bedard. 21st game of the season for Boxberger. No record, no wins, one loss, 261 ERA. Boxberger will face the Cardinals here in the fifth inning, and they will have their cleanup hitter, Alan Craig, to lead things off. Fastball change, cutter, slider. Boxberger faces Craig, then Yadier Molina, Johnny Peralta. The Rays have the lead right now after a four-run bottom half of the fourth inning. Yeah, here's a case where Joe Madden finds his club grabbing the lead, and he's going to turn it over to the bullpen, except it's only the fifth inning. <laughs> right, and there's perhaps some wisdom in that. The bullpen has been a consistent part for the most part with this club. Well, he hasn't had to work with many leads, obviously, during this 14 out of 15 game losing stretch as Boxberger misses inside with a fastball 1 0. So he's got guys that he likes to get work in with the lead. One of them is Brad Boxberger as he works here in the fifth inning. Eric Bedard goes four innings, eight hits, three earned runs, walked one, struck out four. And really, he pitched a little bit better than that line. There was a lot of. A lot of ground ball base hits that snuck their way through the infield and even Craig's double down the line fooled Evan Longoria a play that he may have been able to make had he not been fooled. At the knees one and two. Rays wrapping up this homestand, trying to pick up win number two in the homestand. They won the game Friday against Seattle. Game started by Eric Bedard, won by Bedard. Now they'll try and win in his second consecutive start. This pitch is away. It's two and two. Well, one of the challenges for these guys in the bullpen right now, Boxberger hasn't pitched since Thursday, the Seattle series. Back-to-back -to -back days in that series and nothing since. And a day off tomorrow so Joe can go. There is a swing and a miss and a pitch in the dirt. Craig not happy with himself as he chased for the strikeout and out number one here in the fifth. Take a look at this and that was never a strike. You could almost call that a non-competitive pitch and that's why Craig is so upset with himself. So Craig now one for three on the game. That'll bring up Yadier Molina. Molina had a big base hit his last time up, a single in the right field that scored two runs with two outs. And in a bat where he was down in the count one and two and eventually worked it to a full count. Oh, what do you like when you watch Brad Boxberger out there? Fun to be in a field level, but enjoying this kiss. And he got called up, uh, but always, you know, obviously from from up top, pretty much. Uh, here's the deal: I, I would have to say he is. If McGee is like an iPad, the big boy iPad, this is mini iPad right here because they're very similar except right-handed. He's a very Iron Mike type of a guy. He keeps it up, big, quick, boom, explosive delivery. Slicing down the line, Kiermaier plays it on a hop. Kevin thought about going for the dive initially, but then at the last second realized he wasn't able to get there. Yeah, he got such a great jump. You know, he had an outside chance of making a great play, but he figures, why put that potential tying run in scoring position? And he makes a wise decision here to pull up, and Molina stops it first. Yeah, you're right, because, you know, Exuberance could have gotten him hurt right there and trying to think that I'm just going to go all out for it. And uh, the right call was to, to pull the reins on that one. So a one out base runner, Yadi Molina, and here's Johnny Peralta.
One thing we have learned about watching Boxberger this season is he is the quickest relief pitcher I can ever remember in the race history in terms of warming up. Yes. Mm-hmm. He'll take five or six pitches and start looking down the line saying, I'm, I'm ready. ready. Yep. It's remarkable. Let's see, he throws a strike. But if you do kind of watch it, very similar to McGee. They're very Iron Mike type of pitchers. They're about pinpoint finesse. Obviously, McGee is five to six miles an hour harder in the, in the 96 to 98. But this kid, kid is very precise. And when you're a good, stiff fastball, good changeup pitcher, if you're quick with your arm speed like that, you get them. There it is right there. There's the changeup. That arm speed. Iron Mike kind of thing going on has a hitter lulled and you're you time that and then of course you want to put it where you want it down by the knees then you give him the knees change up well out of the hand and with that quick motion you're saying there's no way it's a fastball uh, sorry change up and he pours the fastball over at the knees there you go that's the backward way to doing it uh, if you get him thinking change up then you pop him 92 on the knees. It looks like 100. You have no, he had no reply to that. There was no way that he could have just even tried to follow off. You could try to follow off a change up there if you're out in front. But there's no way you could come back on that pitch. Yeah, that's why they call it locking a hitter up. Yes. That's exactly what he did. There's just no place to go. 31 strikeouts now for Boxberger in 21 and a third innings. And there's a strike to John Jay. He is pouring strikes over. Nine of his 12 pitches have been over the plate. Fun to watch from here, guys. I don't, it would not be fun to be up at the plate, I'll be telling you right now. <laughs> I'm enjoying it right here in the well. It's very nice. 13 mile an hour difference between his fastball and his changeup. That pitch was away, one and one. Yeah, on the same arm action. Yes. That's the key. Can you imagine if, you know, I hope they become really, really, really good buddies over the years, and he can then, conversely, what McGee can teach him about pitching in the big leagues in tough situations mentally and where to spot your fastball. Hopefully this kid can show him the real true changeup. Yeah, <laughs> that would be impressive. If McGee has this changeup, uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even, can't imagine what what Jake McGee could do. He'd have to go to a different league. Yeah, no, yeah, you go to the next league, which I visited for a second, and I knocked on the door, and I realized, wait, no, I'm in the wrong. I'm going. I'm leaving. It was somewhere very far away. <laughs> I saw Mr. Williams there, and he was, he was just uh, still hitting. <laughs> Boxberger is trying to strike out three in this inning after a one-out hit, and instead he hits John Jay. That one got away a little yeah. bit ahead of the count. It's got a little a bit away from him. So Jay's been on base all three times, two base hits, and now he is hit by a pitch. Number three, Mark Evans. It's really frustrating because he had him down a ball and two strikes there. He loses him, and that pushes Molina into scoring position. The Cardinals. In four of the five innings, each of the last four, they put man in scoring position, including here in this frame. The only guy on the Cardinals roster who has faced Boxberger prior to tonight is Mark Ellis, 0 for 2 against Boxberger, and takes a call strike, nothing in one. Ellis had two hits against Bedard, punched a little curveball on the ground to the right side in the first. Hit of the game in the second inning, and then a base hit to left his last time up. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Boxberger ahead of another hitter, trying to keep the Rays with his 4 3 lead in the fifth inning. Rays scored four in the bottom half of the fourth, snapping a 31 inning scoreless streak. Pitch missed somewhere. Not sure where. Let's take a look at the, the tracker right here, and that's a strike. Yeah, missed for a strike. Yep. <laughs> Not sure how you take that if you're Mark Ellis, but he gets another life at one and two.
Runners on the move and the pitch is fouled away. How about that? Down in the count, two outs. Mike Matheny putting the runners on the move, thinking that Ellis could make contact, or if he strikes out, there's no harm, no foul. Well, you figure Boxberger is going after him, and Ellis, good contact. The Cardinals don't steal a lot of bases outright, but they do start runners. Obviously, the Rays not worried about the runners playing their normal defense, not holding either runner. This time they're stationary, and the pitch is away, two and two. Molina on second, he has the hit in this inning. Jay on first, he was hit by a pitch. Two outs and a 2 2 count to Mark Ellis. That's a frustrating part. You make a great pitch as he did, and you don't get the call. And now the at bat becomes an extended at bat with a couple of runners and two outs here. Going to get him here. Boxberger up to 21 pitches in the inning. Inside the count's full, and now with two outs, the runners will have a head start. Have the bullpen stirring. That's Ramos, the lefty. Yates, the right hander. Inside ball four. So the 0 2 pitch that was called a ball would eventually lead to a walk as Mark Ellis stayed alive. Now, two things happening in this inning. The hit batter with a one two count. And then that strike that was called a ball. And now it's an issue. Now the bases are loaded, and Jim Hickey is going to visit the mound with Peter Borges, the hitter for the Cardinals. So the Rays score four in the bottom half of the fourth to take their first lead. And now the Cardinals bounce right back by loading up the bases with two outs. And the Rays sent nine men to the plate, batted around for the eighth time this year. First time since the 25th of May against the Red Sox to score those four runs tonight. See this year for Borges just one at bat with the bases loaded and he struck out. Number nine hitter for the St. Louis Cardinals has grounded out to first and bounced into a fielder's choice. Madden usually doesn't like when his relievers get around that 30 pitch plateau in an inning. That's why you saw the bullpen action earlier with Cesar Ramos, the lefty, and the rookie Kirby Yates, the righty. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Ball exploded from here. That ball just exploded on everybody. I, I tell you that I had a little ball getting up some late, late uh, explosion halfway up the up down the mound. So if he was late on that pitch, oh, do you yeah. go right back to it? You know what? I do. I, I elevate him a little bit. I elevate him to make sure that he doesn't mistake it. Because the only thing he's gonna do right now for me is swing and miss, take it. Or follow it off, you know, follow it off. I, I don't give him a chance to hit, but I don't give him the change up right here, believe it or not. They want to go upstairs. 0 2 in the air to right center field. Kiermaier, what a catch by Kiermaier. He saves two, maybe three runs on a diving catch in right center field. Kevin Kiermaier lays out and keeps the Rays. 
three. Inning, Brad Boxberger with a scoreless top of the fifth, thanks to his former Durham Bulls teammate, Kevin Kiermeyer. You won't see a catch better than this one. An outstanding play. Kiermeyer got a great jump as he does, and a tremendous leap, and a pretty good landing as it turns out for the final out. I tell you, the pitch for Boxberger ahead 0-2, they wanted it up. He didn't get it up as much as he wanted, and it was out over the plate a bit. Yeah. And so that allowed that fly ball, that shot into right center field, and he was bailed out by Kiermaier. What a catch by Kiermaier. We have just seen the start of that outfielder's career, and he's already built up a pretty nice personal <laughs> highlight reel. Major. I mean, the, the play in Anaheim in right center field, the throw in Cincinnati, that play, that if the Rays win this game, they could point to that one that could have saved the day. I mean, that probably gets to the wall, and that scores three runs if he doesn't catch that ball. But you got to understand, that play had so many dynamic things within one acrobatic play. First of all, he's got to read it perfectly. Second, the jet burst speed to go. It wasn't like three steps, I dive. You see a lot of those. Five steps, I dive. This is, I got to book it. Then I got to fly through the air. I mean, fight there, then I gotta land so I don't break my wrist. This ball's hit well to left field, but back on it is Jay, and he reaches up in front of the wall and makes the play. Evan hit that pretty well, just shy of the wall. But you're right, Dwayne. It all started, and we were talking about right before the pitch. I said, I don't think they're gonna go change up. They're gonna go up. You have to go way up. Miss it, foul it, take it, but don't give him up where he can handle it. Man, he hit a bullet. Peter Burgos did. What a read by this kid. This kid has been outstanding. He has indeed, and, and must not forget that that ball that Molina hit earlier in the inning, he decided to pull up on, and wisely so. And Molina was left stranded at third base on his great catch. And Peter Borges is used to robbing right. hitters himself in center field, and he was just robbed of a big time two or three RBI double. Here's Loney sending one towards Borges, who drifts back towards the track, but will have room for the second out. And the dive, as you mentioned, Dwayne, was timed perfectly. If he doesn't time that jump, that was a leaping catch, and he was at the apex of where he could have gone in terms of moving over to right center field and jumping at the same time. It's a lot of fun to watch him play the outfield. You know what's so exciting about him? It's obvious when we see him make those plays, but you've got athleticism and you've got brains and effort. Mm -hmm. All of those things combine into making the plays that we've seen him make both offensively and especially defensively. And as O said, he had the Jets going. He had a great jump on that line drive off a right-handed bat of Borges. 
0-1 oh now the count to Ben Zobers takes a breaking ball for a called strike. Nothing in two. As I said before, it's very, very hard to be a game-changing defensive player from the outfield position. It just it is. I mean, uh, it's, it's it's from the infield position. It's from catcher, second, short, third, first base. You can be a game changer even at first base. Uh, we know that. But in the outfield, the last person that I can think of that was a game changer that you say you come and this guy can make a difference is Andrew Jones in my book. Things that he did, you know, would save so many runs, uh, not just with his prowess of jumps he got, but his arm, the way he left his feet perfectly, uh, everything. Uh, other than that, I mean, you guys, I mean, I'm thinking there's some really good outfielders out there, but game changers, this kid has that potential. Two and two, the count to Ben Zobris. Kiermaier takes special pride in his defensive play, too. He works hard at it. In the air to left, John Jay started the inning by drifting back on Evan Longoria's fly ball. This time he drifts back right in front of the corner in left field, pulling that fly ball off the bat of Ben Zobris. One, two, three inning for Waka. Top of the six, J.C. Ovedo, the new pitcher for the Rays. And a question that we're getting a lot on sunsportrays at gmail.com tonight as part of Web Wednesday, guys. With Kevin Kiermaier playing as well as he is defensively and offensively, he leads the team in extra base hits since May 18th. It makes for a very crowded outfield, especially when Will Myers returns. How do you think Joe Madden's going to juggle all these outfielders, guys? Juggling outfielders, lineups, and rosters has never been a problem <laughs> for Joe Madden, and he will do it gladly. You know, it's going to be August before we see Will Myers again. In the meantime, it's given uh, Kiermaier an opportunity to play more. He's taken advantage of it. So it's turned out to be sort of a blessing in disguise. And uh, I'm not worried about what Joe Madden will uh, figure out to do with all of those pieces. He'll make good use of them for sure. No doubt. And you're right about the August time frame. And that's a situation that's still over a month and a half away. And a lot of things can change between now and then. We'll see how it all plays out uh, before Myers comes back. As Juan Carlos Oviedo is in for his 21st game of the season. And he will have the top of the order to face here for the Cardinals in the sixth inning. Rays lead 4-3 thanks to Kevin Kiermaier's spectacular catch. To end the top of the fifth. Oviedo with a called strike to Carpenter, nothing in one. Carpenter has struck out, walked and scored a run, and singled. Juan Carlos will throw a lot of changeups, especially to left hand hitters. Many more changeups this year than he ever did when he was Leo Nunez with the Marlins. And there is that changeup away. It's one and one. 
Still building back that arm strength. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that Joe Madden has said in this bullpen by committee now that Oviedo's not going to be the guy, at least for now, who will be closing games. The Rays have some other options and they'll go that way as they continue to see him build arm strength and become a little more precise with his work out there. It will be interesting to see if the Rays maintain this lead, how Joe plays it out in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Sure will be. Because this is the first game since he has announced that the closing situation was a committee, a closer by committee. As he looks over that scorecard, he's basically looking for the right matchups now. As you see Grant Balfour down there between Balfour, Peralta, and McGee. Somewhere in that mix, you'll get seven, eight, and nine if the Rays maintain this lead. And there's a called third strike on the outer half. Carpenter thought it was away. He's caught looking, and Oviedo strikes him out. The Rays didn't get a call in the fifth inning, and that one. Very close right there. Carpenter thought it was off the plate. Might have been a little bit. But they get the call down and away. You see him say that's not a strike. He's a guy with a pretty good eye at the plate. That's pretty close to take though with two strikes. May have been just off. As Randall Grichuk is the batter. He is 0 for 3. And he'll hit against a right hander for the first time. In this game. 0 for 3 against the starter Eric Bedard. Checked his swing. This ball is going to stay fair. Oviedo will take it to the bag himself. And there's two away. Join in on the World Cup Madness and come out to Soccer Night at the Rays on Friday, June 20th. Purchase this special ticket package and receive a discounted seat and a unique Rays soccer scarf. For just $30 for tickets, visit RaysBaseball.com slash special events. It'll be when the Rays take on the Astros. The Rays' next opponent will be Houston after the off day tomorrow. They'll fly into Texas and play the Astros Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before coming right back home for a 10 game homestand. As the Rays are in the midst of 18 out of 21 at Tropicana Field. Here's Matt Holliday. Low ball one. Holliday has twice lined out to right, singled his first time up. Kevin Kiermeyer robbing Peter Borges of a potential bases clearing extra base hit and the Rays lead it four to three. Two and oh. Nine through 2011 has seen a number of these Cardinals hitters before. Matt Holiday, two for four, two singles and two double plays. There's a pitch away and low, and it counts now three and one on the number three hitter in St. Louis's lineup, Matt Holiday, who's a DH. Alan Craig do up next. Two miles an hour and the counts full. Seems harder than 92, and again, that's because of the lulling and that in the back of your head. You've seen a few of the changeups uh, and a lot of motion with your legs and arms. A little different than Boxberger, which is more Iron Mike. Uh, Oviedo throws a lot of stuff at you before that ball is released. Tries to shoot the corner with a fastball and just misses ball four. So a two out walk to Matt Holiday. First baseman. 
Alan Craig the hitter. Doubled on that. Ground ball that fooled third baseman Evan Longoria one for three. Scored a run. See his numbers on the year. Leading the team with those 33 runs batted in. Nothing in one. Yadier Molina, two RBI single in the third. And Matt Carpenter, an RBI single in the fourth. And that's how the Cardinals jumped out 3 0. And the Rays snapped a 31 inning scoreless streak with a four spot, including a couple of big two out hits by Matt Joyce and Desmond Jennings. Pitches away, and it's one and one. Well, the good thing about Oviedo as well. Is what he's missing. He's missing away off the plate to Holiday and to Craig. Foul away, and it counts one and two. Bedard for four. Boxberger pitched the fifth. Now Oviedo on here in the sixth inning. Yeah, no sooner you say that than that slider was a little shaky right there. It made you nervous. We saw Craig with his eyes lighting up on that pitch. Just missed two and two. And there was another miss too where he really wanted that pitch down and Hannigan tried to accentuate the desire, the need to get it down. So a miss on the last couple pitches. Oviedo after a two out walk. Now two and two on Alan Craig. In the air to right center. Well hit. Jennings back to the track in front of the wall makes the play to end the inning. A two out walk is stranded on a deep fly ball by Alan Craig. And the Rays maintain that 4 3 lead as we head to the bottom half of the sixth.
Sports is presented by your Tampa Bay Area Mazda dealers. It takes conviction, creativity, and courage to build cars worth driving. This is the Mazda way. 22 Jump Street in theaters June 13th. And by Navy Federal Credit Union, 4 million members, 4 million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. Bottom half of the six, the Tropicana Field, Juan Carlos Oviedo negotiating through the top half of the inning. And the Rays will face a new pitcher, Carlos Martinez, hard throwing young right hander. Well, for the 30th time, 0 3 with a 432 earned run average. And he has drawn comparisons to Pedro Martinez. Very firm fastball, hit 100 in his last outing. 97 on the uh, Tropicana Field radar gun on the first pitch here in the bottom of the sixth. Called strike. Pitched on Friday in Toronto, did Martinez. Two thirds of an inning. Hit 100 on the gun. Firm fastball, usually around 97 98. Curveball, two seamer, and a changeup. Throw a lot of curveballs to righties against the lefties. That four seamers is main pitch, but also mix in a two seamer in the curveball. Just an occasional changeup. The Jesus will lead things off for the Rays here in the sixth inning. A walk and a fly out on his card tonight. The Jesus, Matt Joyce, who snapped that 31 inning scoreless streak, has lasted bad. And Yunel Escobar. Pitches away, two and two. From down here, he looks like a little kid up at the mound. He's not very tall. The ball is a blur as it comes to the plate. When he threw that 198, I was like, wow. Explosive. He's actually two months younger than the starter, Michael Waka, the youngest pitcher on this staff, and he gets to Jesus chasing that changeup for the first out of the inning. And that's the first strikeout for Cardinal pitching. How about that? Michael Walker, five innings and no strikeouts. In fact, he had only one strikeout in his last start in six innings against Kansas City. Prior to that, he had struck out 75 in 73 in a third inning. Hmm. So he was averaging more than a strikeout an inning. Solid. And in Kansas City, and now tonight at Tropicana Field, 11 innings combined in just the 1K. Yep. And I, this is a particularly frustrating night for Waka. He doesn't allow a hit in four of the five innings. And the one inning he gets in trouble, the first two hits, neither one was hit hard. But he works into some trouble later in the inning with some wildness. He ended up with four walks, and two of them were in that four run fourth by the Rays. As I said, we did not get the best of Adam Wainwright, and definitely not the best of Michael Waka. Joyce tried to hold up, but he went around. Since says Mike Estabrook, and it's one and two. Yeah, Wainwright came out of that with uh, the sore elbow. They had the MRI of him. You can see he tried to check, but he went around. They were concerned because he has come back from Tommy John surgery, and they're reporting that there's no ligament issue. Got a sore elbow. And Joyce is out on strikes. Firm changeup. He throws that changeup 89 to 90 off that 97 98 mile an hour fastball. And that one just had some bite diving away from Joyce for his second strikeout in as many batters. I tell you, now I know the uh, comparison to one Pedro Martinez as mm -hmm. I, I faced Pedro a few times when he was with the Dodgers before he got traded to. Uh, to Montreal and it was similar to this. It was just ridiculous with the 98 mile an hour fastball and then Pedro's changeup was more majestic because it had greater screwball effect and it was a joke. It really was. He was cheating up there but in a different way. <laughs> yeah. He just hit 99 on that right. last fastball yeah. and it registered at 100 on the stadium gun. But again you're talking like you can see in the mountain right there. He's a short kid. Yeah. This kid is, is 5'10", maybe? The torque on your shoulder and elbow and everything that you have to generate because you don't have a whole lot of length in your arm to whip it is impressive. They list him generously at 6 foot. What? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. 6 foot, 185 pounder. 
but you're right. He does not look like he's quite a six foot right hander. It's 2 0 to Unil Escobar. Next pitch is sent high in the air on the right side. Alan Craig, the first baseman, makes the call, waiting for it to come down. That was a mile high. And a 1 2 3 inning for Carlos Martinez. We head to the seventh inning at Tropicana Field. Rays lead 4 3. Over the cards, thanks in part to Kevin Kiermeyer and his outstanding catch at the top of the fifth to Rob Peter Borges of a couple runs. I'll tell you what, guys, Twitter is on fire right now. And I have to read this tweet by Wayne Tyson. He is my baseball mentor, and no better time to show you this right now. He says, We need a new defensive stat called the Kiermeyer effect. That is unreal. You cannot argue with that. Todd and Dwayne. That kid is so electric. And I'll tell you what, all those guys in that clubhouse will tell you his energy is absolutely contagious. You gonna favorite that, Kelly? Hey, more in the seventh inning with our own Dwayne Stats. All right, Todd, thank you. That was a flying Walinda catch, is what that was out there. An amazing grab. So we go to the seventh. On Carlos Oviedo still out there on the hill and his first pitch to Yadier Molina is a fastball that missed one ball no strikes. Oviedo worked the sixth gave up a two out walk got Craig on the fly ball to deep center and a big big cut there by Molina attacking the fastball and he missed it the count is one and one. Ray's action with the right hander Grant Balfour. Cesar Ramos, the lefty, down there in the Rays bullpen. Eric Bedard worked the front four. The Rays grabbed the lead. Joe Madden went to the bullpen. One ball, two strikes, an off speed pitch. He's got an inning from Boxberger. One inning so far from Juan Carlos Oviedo. And a cut the miss. Molina reaching out there for the fastball and coming up empty. Oviedo's buddy Joel Peralta thinks that by the middle of the season he's going to be around 95 with that fastball. That was 93. Good movement, outer half, maybe just off the plate, but with two strikes, Molina trying to protect and goes down. Real good movement. Johnny Peralta 0 for three tonight with a couple strikeouts. He leads the Cardinal team in home runs with 10. First pitch is too high.
Rays have the infield shift and this pitch is fouled the other way out of play. And a nice catch by a fan right down there in the front row. So the count is one and one. We're talking about uh, the performance of Michael Walker tonight, the impressive young right hander. No strikeouts in five innings, including six relief appearances. Pitch is going to be inside, and he did check, says Jerry Lane, the crew chief down at first. It's two and one, including six relief appearances. This is the only time in 29 major league outings that Walker has not recorded a strikeout. That hits him. Change up. That just kept bearing in on Peralta to the point where he couldn't get out of the way of it. Frustrating for Oviedo and Joe Madden might play matchup the rest of the way in this game. Well, As he has John Jay, the left-handed hitter, do up, and that's why he had the lefty and the right-hander down there in the bullpen. So the Rays are going to make the pitching change with one out and a man on here in the seventh. Peralta with the changeup. He had a couple pitches that missed location. Good velocity tonight as he continues to work his way back to being 100% what the Rays think he can be. There's now a great new way for you to experience Rays baseball with the Rays flex packs. These three, six, or nine game packs offer fantastic savings and allow you to select any games you'd like during the season. To purchase your flex pack, call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com. Cesar Ramos in the game to match up against the left handed bat of John Jay. Johnny Peralta at first with one out. Jay sends a fly ball into left. Joyce will have to go back, still on the move, and at the track makes the catch. So Jay hit it a long way to the opposite field, and Joyce kept tracking it and finally got back there to make the grab. So Ramos in the game for one pitch, as it turns out. The height of efficiency right there. What an outing. So he retired the one man he faced on one pitch. Back in a moment.
game. Grant's first appearance after that devastating ninth inning Sunday against the Seattle Mariners when the Rays were within one out. In fact, one pitch from getting out of that ninth, and Seattle put up five against Balfour. And so here's Grant to work to the right handed bat of Mark Ellis. See Grant with really three blow up innings this year that has caused that ERA to skyrocket a couple of five run innings and a three run inning. 56% fastballs this season compared to 67.7% over two thirds last year with the A's. And so Mark Ellis, the veteran right handed hitting infielder. One out of two with a walk drawn in his matchups prior against Grant Balfour. And the fastball is upstairs. Ball no strikes. And guys, if I've seen one thing with, with Grant that has been disturbing, it's just that I don't think he's had his confidence with his fastball. Why? Because maybe it's not at 95, 96 like he's used to, 90, 92, 93. He's gone off to the breaking pitches more that we are accustomed to. Yep. Yet, recently, the two seam fastball that I've seen from him has had life, even at 92, 93, 94. And, and I think he needs to regain that confidence to know that he maybe doesn't have to be at 96 if he spots it. Yeah, I, I think you're right on point, and that's reflected in the numbers that Todd cited. That he has not relied upon the fastball as much this year as he has in past years. And when you look at that roughly 67% to 56%, that's a significant difference. A lot more sliders. Twice as many sliders this year as he threw last year. And threw some curveballs that hurt him the other night against the Mariners. Ground ball shortstop Escobar takes it to second they get the force on Peralta. So we're going to head into the bottom of the seventh seventh inning stretch time four three range. On we go to the home half of the seventh inning. It's a 4 3 Rays lead as Ryan Hannigan fouls the first pitch out of play. Carlos Martinez, the right hander, 
on in relief of Michael Walker. He retired the Rays one two three with two strikeouts in the sixth. Here in the seventh, it's Hannigan followed by Jennings and then Kiermaier. Upstairs, one and one. Cut the miss. Slider in the count is one and two. There's Jennings on deck. Martinez originally signed with the Red Sox as a shortstop and was suspended for a year because of some inaccuracies of his real name and his age. Cardinals wound up signing him. And he's taking advantage of that strong arm out of their bullpen. And Hannigan is out on strikes. He's got really nasty stuff. That pitch just dives down and away from Hannigan. Because of his shortstop background, too, he's an excellent fielder. He's got that high octane fastball. He can drop that slur slider on you and also has a little change up curveball. I mean, a two seamer to go along with that 98 97 fastball. Desmond Jennings check swing and a hopper towards short could be close. He is safe at first base. The Jennings has himself an infield hit. Check swing and that little hopper out to short. And Peralta did not have time to get that ball to first in time. I mentioned Martinez is a good fielder, but he kind of falls off to the first base side, and in doing so, doesn't give himself a chance to make that play to the third base side of the mound. And once it got to Johnny Peralta with Desmond Speed, Peralta had no chance. Well, there's Kevin Kiermeyer, 0 for 2 at the plate with a walk. But an outstanding catch in right center field. The Rays out of a big spot in the fifth inning. Leaving the bases full of St. Louis base runners. Ball 96 away. One ball, no strikes. Two and oh. He's got four runs of Michael Walker all in the fourth inning. Four runs, four hits, an error involved, but all four runs were earned. A good take on another pitch away. Three and oh. A little infield hit by Desmond Jennings this inning, the only hit other than that fourth inning. Ball four. We'll put men at first and second. A four pitch walk to Kiermeyer pushes Jennings into scoring position and gets Evan Longoria up there. Well, if there's a hitter tonight in either lineup who deserves something good here, it would be Longoria who hit a screaming line drive back in the first to Carpenter in third who caught it. Then he hit the ball deep to the track. In left field in the fifth. So far tonight, he's 0 for 3. And he pulled those balls that he hit well the line drive to third, the deep fly ball to left. When he gets a guy that could go 98, 99 with a fastball, sometimes you see him drive to right center field when he's on. And the Rays have some speed on the bases. He 
tried to turn it around right there with a big cut. 98. And guys, a lot of things I see about Evan, and, and obviously we've talked about an importance to, to him, to the team, but for me, the big thing that I'm looking for is just to him stay in his zone and not try to do too much out of his zone. Ground ball through the right side. Base hit in the right. Jennings will head to the plate and will score standing up. The Rays add to their lead. A great job by Longoria. He took one shot with that first swing and then down 0 1. Drives in the run with a base hit through the hole on the right side. That pitch was right on the outer half of the plate, and he didn't try and do too much of it, Dwayne. You're exactly right. He went for it on that first swing. The second swing, he shortened up a little bit and took what the pitcher gave him, which was the pitch on the outer half, and just served it in the right field. Well, I got an opportunity to, to, to field level in the beginning. I said I wanted to look for runner scoring position hitting, opposite field hitting with runner scoring position, and we've done it tonight. Well, the Rays add to their lead. It's now five to three, and a pitching change coming up. An RBI single by Evan Longoria. Now the former Ray, Randy Choate, veteran left-hander, is on to match up against James Loney. 25th game for Choate. He knows his role. He'll come in and face a lefty here. Sinker slider throws a lot of sliders to lefties. Loney singled and scored in the four-run fourth inning. Takes the pitch inside off the plate. Joe worked two thirds of an inning five days ago in the series against the Blue Jays in Toronto. To the opposite field, Jay playing shallow. Makes the catch and the throw to the plate will not be in time. Kiermaier tagging after the short fly ball to left. And the Rays tack on another run. That one charged to Martinez and a nice job uh, hitting that ball the other way by Loney against the lefty to get the run home. Try to sweep that little slider to the outside and Loney just inside out. And as you mentioned, Jay not playing all that deep, but Kiermaier with good speed. Able to beat the throw home rather easily. Really nice job by Loney. Not trying to do too much again, just like Evan Longoria the previous AB. So the RBIs in this inning belong to Longoria and Loney. 
Rays make it a six to three ball game. And Zobrist hitting right handed now against Cho. One ball, no strikes. I'd like to see Zoe put a charging one right now, right here, to kind of accentuate this whole day, night. And single and scored in the fourth. It's one and one. Well, a nice job by the Rays here in the seventh inning with one out. That infield hit by Jennings keyed it. Kiermaier through the walk. The opposite field base hit for Longoria producing one run. The opposite field fly ball from Loney got the other one home. It's a sort of the Rays way. Well, it's an efficient <laughs> offense, yeah. which we haven't seen in a long time. And that's what they've been known for. So good and refreshing to get that four spot in the fourth and now to give yourself a little bit of insurance with a couple runs here in the seventh. And again, guys, hitting wise, when in doubt, you go back to fundamentals. And they, they've been trying to go back to fundamentals way before this. You know, 28 inning streak. They've been trying to do this for quite a while, but you, the fundamentals are, and that's what I mentioned that when I got down to this well to see, I'm going. Let me see field level, trying to work ahead in the count, be aggressive yet be smart, and then more importantly, middle away. Work your bats middle away. And that's what we've done today. Everything. I mean, jam yourself, break your bat. I don't care. I want you to go middle away and that means you're going to let the ball travel deeper. That means in order to let the ball travel deeper you have to focus on the ball more when you focus on the ball more you're more on in tune and you're and you're hitting better because you're you know just all eyes on that pitch. Well that's what James Loney does. He's made a living doing that. And did it perfectly with that little fly ball the other way. And preceding him. Longoria gave it one good shot. Yeah, yes, he did. And then went the other way and drove in the run. Good to see those guys smiling again, too, on the bench. Isn't it? <laughs> wow. We haven't seen that in a while. Desmond Jennings has been part of this with a couple hits and two runs batted in, a run scored. That's a hot shot down to third. Comes up on Carpenter. And Zobrist is aboard. So the Rays will continue the bottom of the seventh inning. That ball was hit really well by Zobris on the short hop. Almost got to Carpenter in the air, but that short hop, it bounced high off his glove. Showed normally in there just to face the lefty, but he had to face Zobris, the switch hitter. The Rays are going to pinch hit for David De Jesus, and once they announce that, they will probably bring Choate out of the game. Yeah, they get the base hit from Zobris. And now Forsyth has been announced, and we're going to get another pitching change. The right-hander Seth Maness will enter this game. Rays lead 6-3.
Forsyth approached the plate. Get 50% off at PapaJohns.com the day after the Rays score six. Use promo code Rays6, and the Rays have put up six runs here so far tonight. Who to thank it? it? Feels good, I'll tell you that <laughs> all the way around. Seth Main is the new pitcher. Logan Forsyth stays on here after being announced as the pinch hitter. Takes the pitch inside. Main is out of East Carolina University. Picks up a strike to Forsyth. It does have a really good. I've seen a pitch before. It seems like a palm ball or some sort of breaking pitch. He throws it has a lot of depth and break to it. It's popped up. It's Peralta, the shortstop, making the catch. Rays sent seven men to the plate. They score two and lead six to three after seven. Lead as we move into the eighth inning at Tropicana Field tonight. 6 3 ball game. Our Chevy Division storyline word from Baltimore. Manny Machado suspended five games and fined an undisclosed amount for that bat tossing in Sunday's game against Oakland. And here's how all of that broke out. Bad blood brewing there between Oakland. And the Orioles and the bat went flying right there. Also took some long back swings, hitting Derek Norris in the mm. head a couple of times. John Chaser, the former Ray, right in the grill of Manny Machado, who has appealed the suspension and in the lineup tonight for Baltimore. And has issued an apology in the aftermath of all that. Grant Balfour back to work. He got out of the seventh inning, got the last out. The first pitch here to Peter Borges is too high. A fastball, 1 0. Borges victimized in the fifth inning on a great catch by Kevin Kiermeyer in right center field. There's the strike. That left the bases loaded for the Cardinals in the top of the fifth. Preserved a 4 to 3 lead. The Rays have added two in the seventh. We're now at the eighth inning. Ground ball to third. Longoria's throw to first. One man gone in the eighth. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag SunSports fan photo for a chance to be shown at an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Hey. Who is that guy? <laughs> yes. He can't stay away. I love it. VA. VA tuning in and sending a little uh, fan photo in. A little family time. 
And Carpenter takes the pitch down. One ball, no strikes. You know, there's another way that Grant ball for, and he may eventually get back in that ninth inning role. But I like the fact that Joe is allowing him to not only pitch through the eighth inning, if that's the case, but there's nobody up in the bullpen right now. And he's facing the top of the order. So Joe's saying, look, Grant, it might not be the ninth inning right now. I still like your stuff a lot, and it's going to play for us and win us some games. It might be to get the last out of the seventh and go through the eighth with the top of the lineup as a second hitter. You might be right, TK, and right? I, this is a different amount of things he can do here. Definitely, Joe, I think, is going matchup to matchup, but right now, ball for is feeling pretty comfortable. That was a nice little breaking pitch, but predominantly he's been pounding the zone with a fastball. Yeah, he had Carpenter looking for a fastball when he threw in that slider, and it's largely a matter of confidence now. You yes. get through two or three outings like Grant went through, and you've got to get out there, and, and he has an opportunity here to do it. He got the last out of the seventh. Stole the ball well here in the eighth. Just missed right there in the breaking pitch. And as devastating as a loss might be like that. There are a lot of opportunities in the season and you know that he's going to pitch well. Carpenter fouls this breaking pitch away. So three straight sliders now. He just missed on the slider on the one two pitch fouled off the two two pitch. Need to go back to some heat here. But this is a good time to, to work on that. Not work on it, but I mean to, to feature that. Because the guys on deck are looking at it, and you're going to go back to your fastball in the meantime. There's a shot into right field. Kiermeyer not yet to the track in line to make the catch. Kiermeyer handles that one off the bat of Carpenter. And now Oscar Tavares will pinch hit. Take his left handed bat up there against Bow Four. Chick lifted. And Tavares, who has good power. The other cool thing for Grant in this homestand, Wayne, is his father has had a chance to be here for the homestand, flying all the way over from Australia. It doesn't get a chance to see him live. Pitching in the major league very often. That'd be nice to have a clean outing here for that reason alone. Met him uh, in the parking lot a couple nights ago, and it's really neat to talk to him. And and he was uh, excited to be here to watch the sun. One strike to count. A shot that's fouled. Moves Jerry Lane a bit. Two strikes. Not the crew chief for nothing. He can still move. A little scared about that <laughs> one, though. Better in move right there. <laughs> Let me see this move. Whoa, that was right at him. Move and first. Calmly yeah. calls it yeah, move first, then make the call. And there is strike three call. Got him looking on a fastball. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals in the eighth. Braves lead 6 3.
40 of the Tampa Bay Rays and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. On to the bottom of the eighth. Matt Joyce takes the first pitch in there for a strike at the knees. Matt drove in a big run for the Rays and that four run fourth. They've got it started. Oscar Tavares stays on to play right field after pinch hitting. To me, that's the biggest hit in the last two or three weeks. Absolutely. That's the one that got the Rays on the board after 31 consecutive scoreless innings. And he battled. He did not chase a 2 2 pitch that he could have chased in the past and ended up roping a single to center for two runs. A strike on the inside edge. Dennis picks up his first strikeout. Jason Mott down in the bullpen. Maka worked five. Martinez an inning at a third. Choke for a third. Dennis came on, got the final out in the seventh and the first out of the eighth. Escobar. Pitch is a strike. One and one. Good cut, little piece of that one foul. Saw Mott in the Cardinals bullpen. Mike Matheny can empty out his bullpen because they had a day off coming into this series. They will have a day off coming out of this series. And the next time these two teams face each other in St. Louis after the All-Star break, the Cardinals have a day off coming into the race series and a day off coming out. Two balls, two strikes. Short stop for Alta. To first in time to get Escobar. Two up, two down in the eighth. Note I'm noticing no bullpen action to this point in the inning. And just now with two outs is Joel Peralta stirring. Uh-huh. So does Grant Balfour get an opportunity at an old-fashioned 19 mid 80s type save or early 80s where you go two and a third innings. Yeah that's a, a Raleigh fingers save. Goose right gossage. There. Yeah. yeah Hannigan a, the pitch is low. To Ryan Hannigan. That'll build some confidence right there. Mm -hmm. You know you get through that and you get an old school save. Ah, wow. Ball one strike. All four with an inning and a third under his belt right now. A ball, two strikes. Now, guys, Gossage and Fingers and those guys, they weren't doing that every day now. I mean, they were spreading them out. I mean, they were, they were pitching, what, 40, 35, 40, 50 pitches? 60? Yeah, but those guys would, they could go back to back. Yeah, tent to Colby. Yep. When you look at the innings pitch and the games pitched. Now it's close to a one to one ratio with right, closers. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. But back then it was closer to two to one. Wow. Pitch is upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. He's getting Hannigan off the DL today. While he was gone, they won a grand total of one game. So he's back, and they've got a six to three lead. Just a, a nice presence to have back. He is a guy that is a key part of this team. We mentioned the 22 RBI, just eight behind the team lead coming into today. Now nine behind with Loney sacrifice fly earlier. He's had a really good start to the season for the Rays, and it's good to see him back and healthy. And a cut and a miss. 
Rays up and down. One, two, three. We go to the ninth. It's six, three. And they will get a well-deserved off day tomorrow, which leads us to Friday when they travel to Houston. Join us at 7.30 for Rays Live, the pregame show, driven by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Arrestus Estrada will break down Jose Altuve and Alex Cobb, the Bulldog, takes the mound. And I have a feeling tonight you're not going to want to miss our postgame show presented by Checkers after the final out. Hopefully, I'll be in one of the happiest clubhouses you've ever seen this year so far. I'm looking forward to that. Of course, Rich will be hosting out there with Arrestus and Todd and Dwayne. Looking forward to your insight and more replays of that Kiermaier catch, of course. Well, the Rays need three more outs. They have a 6-3 to three lead, and Grant Balfour goes out there. Matt Holliday will lead it off, and Alan Craig and Yadier Molina. And the Rays have Peralta up in the bullpen. So we'll... To wait and see if indeed Peralta gets into this game or if Balfour gets the uh, old school type save and the first pitch is too high. One ball, no strikes. We're talking about, uh, for example, Raleigh Fingers. He made uh, pick a year with Oakland in 75. He made 70 appearances, 134 and two thirds innings. Wow. <laughs> Some of our starters don't get them. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> what are you talking about. Yeah. Well, that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and he had the great year. I mean, he put him away. Yeah. Wow. That, the game has dramatically changed in that sense. Sure has. Just talked to Jim Hickey in between innings, guys, and I said, you're giving him the old school type of save. He goes, it's in his hands. There's a looper shallow right near the line and a foul ball. Here's the deal. Kiermaier can't catch everything. No, no, I was, saying, <laughs> right. I was expecting him to, to jump and, and, and twirl and do a handstand and then catch it. Yeah, I'm telling you. So uh, foul ball and that's just a strike. The counts one and two. He did say that we got the guy, you know, warming up, but we're going to give him a chance because the day off tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we're going to give him a chance to gain a lot of confidence here with this type of outing. Yeah, it'd be a great lift for him. Four righties do up this inning too. High fly ball into left. Matt Joyce will wait for this one. One gone. Yeah, righties and also the middle of the order. You know, if he could wade through the middle of this order, that would be big. First baseman, And for Chevron, a quick look at the uh, starters on Friday. Alex Cobb will get the start, his eighth of the year for the Rays. Colin McHugh will pitch for Houston. Right hander with a four and three record. Astros a different ball club than the one we've seen over the last couple of years. 
They've made some significant strides. One to know the count to Alan Craig. They've won over two thirds of their games, right around two thirds of their games for the last three weeks or so. Two and zero. Oh. As big a boost as last night could be for Jake Odorizzi, tonight could be equally important for Grant Balfour. Mm -hmm. Three and zero, oh. and not to be outdone, our distinguished statistician Rick Odioso reminds us of Mike Marshall in 1974 for the Dodgers. 106 relief appearances, <laughs> 208 and a third innings. What? He was 15 and 12 with 21 saves. He takes that all the time. <laughs> 200 plus innings is the goal for David Price and James Shields Thank every year. You. Yes. How about that? All out of the bullpen for Marshall. Yeah. In 1974, 15 wins, and I'll throw in 21 saves. Fly ball to the left. Matt Joyce right there. Two up and two down. All that separates the Rays from a win and Grant Balfour, a big boost to confidence, is Yadier Molina. Rays trying to close it out. Pitch inside. 81 saves in his career for Grant Balfour. You know they could give Balfour the win. It would cost him, and it would cost him the old school save. That's true. Bedard worked four, so you got to go to the bullpen to pick a winner. If you're the official score, a lookout, a foul ball up the right side. The count is one and one. I think because Boxberger hit a batter, walked a batter, and gave up a hit, it would be tough to give it to him. But Oviedo could because mm -hmm. he went an inning and a third, and then Grant could pick up a. That's right. A two and a third inning save. If he gets the save, it's going to be incredibly satisfying. There's a strike. It's one and two. Regardless, it's satisfying once he just closes and gets the last out, That's whether right. it's a save or not. Right. Because he was down on dumps the other day. When he could have just been the star if he would have gotten Miller out. One, two, the count. Here it is. And it's a little bit low. Dropped the slider there. Let's see. Didn't miss was, by much. Oh, very close. So oh, that's a strike. That's a perfect pitch. You're going to ring him up. Two, two now. Grant goes well, okay. Three and two. Nothing's come easy this year for the Aussie. Fly ball left field. That should do it. Joyce takes care of all three putouts. And the Rays are winners. It's a six to three final here at Tropicana Field. Grant Balfour pitches the final two and a third. And the Rays win this one six to three. They gain a split with St. Louis in this two game series. First time Grant Balfour has gone two and a third or more since 2009. I don't know what the situation was then, but it couldn't have been more gratifying than this one tonight for Grant Balfour. Yes, longest outing in a save, Dwayne, and for him after what has gone on to pick up seven outs in seven batters, that is a huge night for number 50. So Oviedo will get the win, a save for Balfour. Walker, the losing pitcher. 
He's now four and five. And the Rays are winners here tonight, six to three. Rich Hollenberg standing by with Kevin Kiermeyer right now. Rich. Thanks, Dwayne. Kevin, take us back to the top of the fifth inning. Two outs, bases loaded, ball comes off the bat. Take us through it. Uh, it was one of those things where I was playing in on Borges, and, um, you know, 0 2, I, I creeped a little bit more towards the, the right field line, to be honest. And uh, I seen the ball hit, and I went for it. And, uh, you know, it kind of got lost in the lights for a second, and then it popped out again, and then. Uh, I knew I had to die for it, and I was just so thankful for it to, to go into my glove and, and me to secure it. It was a great feeling, and, um, you know, I, I need to make that play, and I did. And then we uh, started scoring some runs after that, so it was a great team win tonight. And it turned out to be the difference maker because you possibly saved three runs, and it ends up a 6-3 victory. We talked earlier before the game about how you and Desmond Jennings at the top of the order want to provide a lot of energy for this team. You both got on base two times tonight, so four times total. That seemed to spark this club. Yeah, uh, anytime your top of the order goes, you know, the whole team goes for the most part because we got guys behind us like Longo and Loney, uh, you know, who are great at driving, driving in runs. So, um, like I said, us speed guys, we're just trying to create a spark any way we can. And Dez had a huge two-out knock to, you know, score some runs. And it kind of, you know, hitting's contagious. So it was one of those things where, you know, we got some uh, momentum going, and uh, it carried over into six runs tonight, so huge win for us. Lastly, I know you haven't been up in the big leagues very long, but this certainly doesn't feel like just any other mid-June victory, does it? Yeah, you know, this is one of those things where we, we need to win, and tonight, um, you know, we, we need to win this game, and, and for us to be down 3-0 early, no, no one, you know, panicked or anything like that, and a couple of lucky hits here and there got us going, and... Um, just uh, just a big team win for us. Kevin Kiermeyer, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Guys, Kevin Kiermeyer plated one run himself, but he prevented three others, and the Rays win it 6-3. Back up to you. All right, Rich, thank you very much. And the fact that that uh, fly ball went in and out of the lights and he picked it up again made it even more incredible. An unbelievable grab by Kevin Kiermeyer in the fifth inning. Rays win it 6-3. We'll be right back.